I'm going to tie Fox's Caddis Pupa, and I'm starting off with a size 14 nymph hook in the vise, and I've got a 332nd black tungsten bead head. Um, you can also tie this in a curved caddis. The thread that I'm going to use is a 14 knot black. And I'm just going to get it started here behind my bead head and trim the tag. This pattern will have a rib to it. I'm going to use just a small copper rib. So I'll place it in the bead head just to help seat it a bit. And then I'll just advance my thread back to the bend in the hook and leave it then at about the three-quarter mark or approximately a, a bead head width uh, back from the actual bead head. The body you've got some options. I like to use a pearl tinsel um, and I also like to use a diamond braid. So this is a midge diamond braid and a peacock. And I'll tie this in. all the way back to where I left my wire and then again I'll leave my thread at that maybe three quarter mark. Now I can start my wraps of braid and this is just side by side all the way up the hook shank until I get to my thread and then I can tie it off. I'll trim the excess. The overbody for this is going to be a chenille and this is just a, a small or micro chenille in green. I'm going to burn one end just like you would a San Juan worm. and I want it to extend just beyond the end of the hook so I'll hold this on top take my measurement and then take two wraps over to hold it and now I can trim that chenille and finish making my wraps want to make sure it's good and centered over the back and now to finish the job of securing it I'll just bring my rib up through just nice even wraps here and when I get to my thread then I'll tie it off and I can helicopter that wire. Again, just making sure that it's nice and situated on top. This pattern will have a set of antenna, and so I've got some mallard flank here that I'll use for that, and sometimes this can be the most difficult part of tying the pattern, is to get just two fibers off the stem. One thing that I've found that if you hold them in your fingers and just give them a little bit of twist they separate a bit and they're easier to manage so I've got my two two fibers I'm going to keep the natural curve of them and I'll set them on top so that they go just beyond the chenille and then I'll tie them in and while I have them here, I can do some some fine adjustments. And again, I'll kind of twist them in my fingers, and that'll help separate them. So now, just kind of final tying in, just to make sure they're positioned just the way I want them. and then I'll remove the excess stem and now I can tie in the throat to this and I'm just going to use um, some pheasant 
and I'll pull back the tip and I'll rotate the vise. I'm going to try to work with that kind of natural curve of the feather and I'll place it in and I'll take two wraps and I want it to go just beyond uh, the point in the in the hook there so that's as far as the, the depth of it so that's about where I want it to be come back and trim that tuck those in. Now the final material that I'm going to use is an ostrich hurl and so I've taken uh, just one section and I'll trim a nice straight edge to this and I'll tie that into the side as well. And now I can just wrap this up to the front. And when I get to the bead then I'll tie it off. Trim the excess. And now I'll just put in couple of whip finishes and remove the thread and that's it a cool little pattern that is foxes foxes caddis poopa